let me introduce you to Laura Patsko. Many of you know her already, but if you can hear me and see me, Laura, can you please turn your camera and mic on? As I was saying, many of you know Laura already because she was a huge help in the chat box yesterday. And she also gave a webinar a few days ago about pronunciation. So Laura is connecting from the UK today. Here she is. And she's an ELT expert. She, you can find her online on Twitter and on her blogs. Um, she's going to be talking to us today about how to move your instruction online with one of our brilliant acronyms, which is PASS today. So Laura is turning off her, sorry, <laughs> turning on her camera and mic. Hi, Laura, thank you for joining us today. Hi, can you hear how me you? okay? Yeah, yeah. So over to you and thank you for being here, everyone, and Laura especially. Thanks, Federica. Thanks everybody for coming. You should be able to see my screen now. Can you just type in the chat box, yes and yes, if you can hear me and see my screen? Great, great, perfect. That's a good start. Okay, so uh, I'd like to make sure that we are all ready for this webinar. So first things first, you will need your mobile phone and your imagination for the webinar. So in a moment, you'll need your mobile phone. Um, if you don't have a mobile phone or you can't find it, don't panic. There is an alternative way to do the activity we're going to do. Um, but ideally, you'll have your mobile. So let's begin. In this webinar, we are going to first talk a little bit about where we are now and how we got here, and then look at where do we go from here. We're going to look at how we can adapt fast, and we'll finish by looking at how to teach the four skills and presenting and practicing new language online. And you'll see a little asterisk here because we're going to do this stage in a somewhat unusual way. So I hope uh, you'll stay till the end and see how. And just a reminder, if you've just joined, you will need your mobile phone and your imagination for this webinar. So, a couple of other webinars to check out. Um, Tom Kittle gave one yesterday. Um, I will update the link on this slide to go to the recording when it's available, and you'll receive all these slides at the end of the, um, rather, at the after the presentation, after the webinar. So you'll have these links. And in a few days, there's another webinar specifically about doing the communicative approach online, and then next week, a Q&A. Um, with an expert in teaching online. So I'm going to try to avoid duplicating any of the same content as these other speakers. Um, and I'll share this information again at the end of this session. So don't worry about getting distracted looking at those events now. I will also say that this webinar focuses on uh, mainly adults or older learners or teens. Uh, we're not going to talk specifically about young children or under 16s. So if you are interested in that, um, I would suggest you go to the new distance teaching hub that Macmillan have set up. Um, this is the link and it has resources for teachers of young learners who are moving online. And of course, you can also prepare some questions to ask uh, Russell Stannard in the Q&A event on the 3rd of April if you're particularly interested in teaching younger learners. And one last thing to mention before we start, just in case. If we have any technical difficulties and I suddenly disappear, first of all, don't worry, don't panic. Uh, second of all, take the opportunity to get up from your chair, walk around, stretch your legs. And while I'm trying to fix my connection or my webcam or whatever the problem is, um, my colleague at Macmillan will open an activity for you to do while you're waiting. So. Just in case of technical difficulties, basically everybody in the world is on the internet right now. Um, so don't worry if something happens, we are prepared. So, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll begin by talking about where are we now? Well, it's a little bit crazy. This is the month of March 2020. 
And uh, just two weeks ago, the current situation with the COVID-19 coronavirus was declared a pandemic officially. Here we are today. So just over two weeks, and I'm sure I'm not the only one who's thinking so much has happened in such a short space of time. I was thinking just this morning as I was uh, going for my only walk outside, when is the last time I actually saw or heard an airplane? And then I was thinking, it's a beautiful day. I, I don't want to have only one walk outside. Maybe I can borrow the neighbor's dog and take it for a walk. I'm also learning. Uh, I actually don't know how to make a decent cup of coffee. I rely far too much on coffee outdoors. And I'm sure I'm not the only person thinking these things. But more seriously, I think a number of us are thinking, how are we going to manage our normal jobs and lives under the current circumstances? So I want to start this webinar with a quick survey to see how we're feeling about all these changes and what challenges we're facing. There are only two questions in the survey, um, but the second question has several parts. So you'll need to scroll if you're on a mobile phone. So let me show you how to access the survey. Get your mobile phone ready. And if you don't have it or you can't find it or you have a really old one and the internet's no good, I'll also show you an alternative way to access the survey. So option number one is to go to this website on your phone and enter the code 588141. Option number two, if you prefer using a QR code, is just to scan this code with your mobile. That will open the link. And option number three is to click on the link in the chat box. I will paste it there now, and you can participate via computer. I'm going to give you three minutes to do this survey. So those are your options for joining. Let me paste the link in the chat box for you. Okay, there's the link. So please go online and start the survey. And what you should see in a moment is everybody's results appearing. The code should be visible on your screen at the top of the screen. 588141. So this will appear on your screen. Click Next to begin the survey. <clears throat> My goodness, look at all these words appearing. You can see that the larger the word, the more commonly people are entering it. So a lot of you are writing health and work. And yeah, you can see a lot of similarity, a lot of semantic similarity of uh, mental health, loneliness, isolation, and so on, fear. So things maybe that are not specifically about online teaching, but just about life. And as life continues, we're expected to manage by teaching online. But that won't necessarily be easy. Okay, and I'm gonna move to the next screen of the survey now so you will see everybody's answers arriving in terms of their confidence. I've opened the voting, so go to the second screen in your survey and you should be able to answer this question now. And please note there are five parts. So if you can't see them all on your screen, scroll down.
great. I can see almost, uh, oh, over 150 of you have voted already. Almost over 200. You're too quick for me. But there were 630 attendees here, so please continue voting if you haven't already. I'll give you about 30 more seconds. <clears throat> okay, about half of you have voted. Excellent, thank you. Great, okay, and now the voting is slowing down. So I'm gonna close the voting and we'll return to the webinar. Thank you everybody who's participated. And I just want to draw your attention to something here, which we're going to focus on in this interview, uh, in this interview, in this webinar, excuse me, I'm reading different words on my screen. Here, your general skills, your general confidence in what you do is relatively high. It's mainly the online environment that is making people nervous. And as I say, we're going to focus on this um, in this webinar. And let me tell you a little bit more about um, how now. Okay. So back to our presentation. I think one of the things that I'm hearing quite a lot in terms of the online teaching environment that we're suddenly in is that people are worried about engaging and motivating their students. And as we saw in the survey, a lot of you are concerned about this too, although you're not too concerned about your general ability to teach and to understand language. It's about engaging and motivating the students. But I think what we have to remember is that we're always concerned about this. This isn't specific to teaching online. What we really want is engaged students in any environment. Um, and I think these are very unusual times. We're going to need to lower our expectations of everybody's engagement and performance. That doesn't mean don't try to engage and motivate your students. It just means don't assume all responsibility for engaging and motivating your students, particularly when we're all very far out of our comfort zones. I think we just need to remind ourselves sometimes that what engages and motivates learners in any environment are, among other things, seeing the connection between what they're learning and their real lives, getting an indication of whether they're finished with something and how far they've progressed since the last time they tried. And having a teacher who really cares, someone who listens to them and is interested in them. We can show them all of these things, online or offline. I think we don't need to worry too much about the fact that we're teaching online. We keep doing the things that we're doing, and as you've just indicated, you're generally quite confident already as a teacher and as a language expert. So the question now becomes then, where do we go from here? What do we do now? What I um, think we need to acknowledge first and, foremost is, first and foremost is this heightened sense of workload and pressure at the moment. There is so much information out there. In the past few days, I counted, I bookmarked 44 links, attended five, no, six webinars, signed up for several new websites, and I'm self-employed with a fair degree of control over how I spend my time. So if you're a teacher with a full schedule and multiple conflicting demands on your attention, especially now you're working from home, I think this level of engagement is unrealistic and I think there's just so much coming at us. And perhaps the uh, kindest and most realistic messages that I've seen so far among all the people sharing top tips are these ones. This person um, at the Open University notes that it takes approximately two years and a dedicated team and a lot of money to get their courses ready for students. And they specialize in online learning, so they know what they're doing. Two years, not two weeks, remember, which is what we've had. Um, and somebody shared um, an article yesterday about why online pedagogy matters. The things that, as you've just said, you already know about good teaching and how language works. Students are going to learn no matter what technology you're using, even with a really basic approach. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, and I also want to comment that um, somebody in uh, Tom Kittle's webinar for Macmillan yesterday said that they found teaching online exhausting. He says, how do you feel about teaching online? And that was the, the main word. And I immediately thought, well, of course, if you've never done it before, because anything is exhausting when it's new and unfamiliar and it requires more attention and time than skills you already know very well, like riding a bicycle or even teaching teenagers in a regular school environment, of course. Um, and I was reminded as well of my experience being a beginner in a second language. I was exhausted all the time because of the demands on my attention span and also because of all the unfamiliar vocabulary. So even though I knew certain concepts, I was really slow and, and tired trying to match the words to the concepts. So generally in this webinar, I'm going to avoid all these kinds of words that we're a little bit inundated with at the moment. Um, we are not going to dwell on the things that we don't know or that we're not familiar with. We're going to focus on the things that we do know and we're really good at and helping people learn. And in this webinar, we're really gonna get comfortable here. Okay, we're going to forget that we're not all experts in teaching and learning online. And we're gonna remember that we are experts in teaching and learning. And online is just one environment to do these in. So if you remember nothing else from this session, I want you to take away this message. That moving online now is not the same as teaching online generally. Please don't expect yourself to become expert overnight and expect all your students to be super engaged all the time and really available and participating. If you had the normal amount of time to set up an online course and test it and iterate and get feedback and development, fine. But you've had a few days. So be fair to yourself, be realistic. Remember this advice um, about how the, even the people who know what they're doing and have lots of support to do it can take two years. And um, we're gonna have a philosophy, we're going to agree a philosophy now for this webinar as follows. We're gonna do our best and we're gonna accept that we and our students will all be learning as we go. We're gonna be realistic, not over ambitious. Now is not really the time to be experimenting lots. We will stick with what we know as much as possible and at least at first. Okay, so again, this is probably isn't the best time to do lots of experimenting. Unless you really want to, you just love that, you have loads of time. But I suspect a lot of you don't. So don't put yourself under pressure to do things that aren't necessary right now. And I think the most important thing is not to forget that yes, these are exceptional times, but fortunately as teachers, we're already quite exceptional people. I think. So we can be proud of what we already know and not focus too much on what we still have to learn. So, how can we adapt fast? <clears throat> I said at the beginning that um, this is actually an acronym. We're going to use these letters as a way of helping us uh, remember what is really important. I'm going to introduce you to this acronym. It's going to help you remember the priorities when you're preparing to teach online under the current circumstances. I might give you slightly different advice if this was part of a whole teacher training course or development seminar about online teaching, um, but it's not. This is a kind of urgent uh, firefighting as we all have to get online really, really fast. So first of all, F is for familiar. Focus on the things that you're already familiar with. Okay. Think, what do you already know about how students learn grammar or vocabulary or listening skills? What activities do you already know that are both useful and enjoyable? Um, and what tech are you already comfortable using? Um, it could just be a telephone. That's okay. You know, we, we do what we can. We're only human, we're not machines. And you already know a lot. So I think reminding yourself of that, you know your students really well, you know what they enjoy, you know what works for them. Your challenge now is just to try to present it slightly differently and manage some environmental challenges. 
but you already know a lot about how to do that. So everybody is dealing with a lot of change right now. Um, I think when we lower our expectations of ourselves and others, we're not being negative, we're just being realistic. It's okay to acknowledge that it's difficult. Oh, excuse me. Uh, ah, yes, and I, I do want to point out something. Um, one of the only times I will mention specific technology in this webinar, um, a lot of course publishers already provide uh, online or digital parts of their course. Um, these are more or less popular in different parts of the world. Sometimes your school adopts a course and it comes with lots of online things or DVDs, but you don't have the facilities to use them. Now might be the time to check them out. Um, I know I just said don't use this time to experiment, but the reason I mention this is because if you're already using a course by one of the major ELT publishers like Macmillan, and they already have a lot of digital or online content, and you already know that course very well because you've been using the book for a long time, you may find it easier to make the bridge to online teaching by using that content. Because you already know, ah, in unit three, there's a really good lesson on the present perfect or something. So for example, earlier I showed you um, the Macmillan Distance Teaching and Learning Hub, which has access to some uh, a lot of resources for free at the moment. Um, again, you'll get these slides after the webinar, so don't worry. Um, and Macmillan are also offering free access uh, for a limited time to the One Stop English resources, uh, Macmillan Practice Online, and the e-readers. And as I say, if you're not using a Macmillan course, then check with your publisher because they often offer similar things. So this might be one way to make that transition a little more comfortable because you'll already recognize the material, the content, maybe the characters, if there's um, a story in the books, et cetera. So back to our acronym. Remember, F was for familiar. Now we have A is for accessible to all. It's always a good idea, of course, to design our courses and our lessons so they include all learners. Um, for example, those maybe who have specific learning difficulties like dyslexia. Um, now we have another dimension that we can't control. It's their study environment. Um, and certainly we can't control that in the same way that we can control the classroom environment. Um, so here, what I mean is to ask yourself questions like, you know, how can we differentiate our instruction so that the learning is accessible, not only to different minds or brains or preferences, but also different physical study environments. And what methods of assessment can we use so that everybody can demonstrate their learning? Because I think one thing that is maybe being overlooked or not given enough attention at the moment is that some, let's say, special needs may be revealed in this new teaching and learning situation that some students or teachers would prefer not to be public. I mean, maybe a particular student is embarrassed that their whole family shares one really old laptop. Maybe they don't actually have the internet at home. They have a poor connection. Maybe they have caring responsibilities for a family member or difficult relationships with their family that they prefer to keep private. And usually they can because they're in school, they can sort of escape and come to school and have their school identity. But now we're asking them to be at home and treat everything as normal, but things aren't normal. So we just don't know what's happening at home for other students and other teachers. Um, and with so many countries now advising us or enforcing uh, working from home, the division between our home and our study or workplace is a lot less clear. So when we think about accessibility, we're also thinking about things like, what if the students cannot do this online survey because their internet connection is terrible? How could they do it in, an, in a non-digital way, but share it with us somehow so they still feel like they're participating? We're no longer in our comfortable, familiar environment where we know that everybody has access to the same desks and chairs and computers. We need to be a lot more flexible and realistic um, and not take things for granted. Yes, thank you, um, Virginia, in the chat box. So that's A. S is for student-centered. This is obviously a real buzzword in language teaching anyway. Um, but I think this is one place or one, one, one aspect in which we'll see that online learning can have a lot of advantages because there are some things that we traditionally do 
in a certain way, really just because of the limitations of the physical classroom. So for example, we explain the grammar to everybody at once, and then we move to practice. Even if some students aren't ready yet and they need more time to process what we just told them, or they need to read it as well as hear it. And we only really do this because we have to. We're in a classroom together. We have loads of people. We have limited time. But in the online environment, they could take their own time to read through the rules, do the practice. Um, same thing with reading texts. We often tell students to share a reading text in pairs and we give them a fixed amount of time to read it. But of course, some people need more or less time. When you are learning mostly as self-study and online or outside the classroom, you can decide how much time you spend. Um, and this can be really helpful and flexible for students who need that flexibility. So in a blended approach, uh, we can reach learners on an individual level much more easily. And we can think, is there anything about this learning goal or this activity which is only this way because of the limitations of the physical classroom? And how can we make this more suitable for individual learners instead of convenient for teachers of a large group? And finally, the T is for time, not for technology, as you may have been thinking. Time and timings. Time operates quite differently in online learning. For example, activities can take longer to set up if we're teaching a live group class. Um, maybe we want students to work in pairs, but first we have to put them in separate breakout rooms so they can be in, a, in their own private area to do their discussion. And we also need to plan our course time differently to make the most of the synchronous live class time, if we have it, uh, which is time when everyone is studying together, like in a physical classroom, and the asynchronous individual study time, um, something we might usually associate with homework, say. And of course, we also need to manage our own time at work differently, because now we're at home. <laughs> so I think questions we need to ask ourselves are, you know, how long would I usually spend planning this lesson or adapting my usual plan for a new class? It's really easy to accidentally spend hours and hours and hours preparing. But I think often that's because we're overcomplicating what we're trying to achieve. And if we go back, to what I was saying at the beginning about just basic principles of learning, we can simplify things a lot and save ourselves time. Having said that, we do also need to think, how long would this activity normally take? You know, Do I have that much time in the class now with the students? Do I need to change it so it's an individual activity? Or do I need to allow more time in order to organize the students or check the instructions? Um, and yes, how might this be affected? now that we're conducting the activity online or asynchronously, meaning people studying in their own time at different times. So to summarize, this is how we can adapt our instruction fast. Keep things familiar, make sure things are accessible to all the students, think from the student's perspective, be student-centered, and think about how you manage your time and how you might need to change how you manage your time and be realistic. Really, really, I can't stress that enough. Be fair to yourself, be realistic. Now, we are exactly halfway through our webinar and I want to put this into practice. So we're going to look at teaching the four skills online. But first, we're halfway through an hour of sitting on a chair listening to someone else talk. So your task is Please get up and stretch for 20 seconds, and I'm going to do it too, okay? And I have a timer. 20 seconds, you will hear my phone ring. Ready? Go. Great, you should be able to hear that now. Your 20 seconds is up. Ah, very refreshing. How do you feel? I feel better already. 
especially if you woke up at seven o'clock this morning to come to this webinar, I think you need to just, well, don't touch your face, but do uh, get up and stretch. <laughs> All right, so we are going to think of some activities to develop the four skills. They are going to be things which we are familiar with, things we can make accessible, things that are student-centered, and we're gonna think about our time. I'm going to give you two key questions for each of these letters to apply these FAST principles, and then we'll do an activity together to try using these questions. And while you do the activity, I will leave the questions visible on the board. So you don't need to take a note or take a picture now, but you can if you want. So these are the questions. And I'll give you a moment to read them. So take a moment to read those questions. You should be able to see eight questions. If you can't see them, it may be because my video box is in the way. But there's actually um, an icon in the top left of the video box with a little two squares and an arrow. And if you click that, it will move my video above the chat box and then you'll be able to see the screen completely. You can also move the video around, drag it to different places on the screen. Okay, now I'm going to bring this back in a moment, so don't panic. But before we can do this activity, I need to put you into groups. Now there are uh, 686 of you, so this will be interesting. Are you ready to get into groups? You're going to be in four groups. Some of you are going to look at reading, some of you are going to look at writing, some of you are going to look at listening, and some of you are going to look at speaking. This is the way you're going to divide yourself. If you were born in these months, you're doing reading, in these months, you're doing writing, in these months, you're doing listening, and in these months, you're doing speaking. But when we're done, we're all going to share all of our ideas. So for now, don't worry if you are doing writing and you'd rather do speaking, that's okay. So make a note of your group, please remember. Okay, you know which group you're in. So if you were born in January, February, or March, you're doing reading and so on. Let me give you an example. My birthday is in August, so I would be doing listening. Let me show you what I might do to do this activity. I'm thinking about my teaching. I'm thinking that in class for listening activities, the students normally listen to the audio twice. They listen together as a whole class. They don't see any video that accompanies the audio because my school doesn't have the facilities. Okay, let's imagine. This is my imaginary situation. How could I adapt this following the FAST principles to do it online? Or I say online, but I mean just generally in this current situation. So my students could listen as many times as they need to. I don't need to stop them after two times. Maybe some students want to listen again. Uh, they listen individually with their headphones so they can control the volume, they can rewind, they can pause, etc. Or they could watch a video on their mobile devices if they have them. So maybe I usually leave the video off and I just play the audio, but video is hugely supportive to have that visual that goes with the audio. So if the students have this capability at home, they can do that. Now I'm gonna show you what to do with these ideas because in a moment I'm going to ask you to share your own ideas. So first I need to share my screen with you. Uh, not this one. 
a different one. Here we go. So we're going to put our ideas together on a screen like this. Can you see the blue screen now? Okay. Now, remember, I said that um, my category was speaking, uh, speaking, listening. <laughs> I don't even remember. Mine was listening. I have an idea. I'm going to click the plus. Laura's listening online. And I'm going to add my suggestion. You should not be able to see the slides now. You should only be able to see the survey. But I will bring the slides back. Okay. So my suggestion is students can listen through their earphones as many times as they want. Then they can do the comprehension questions. There you go. Done. Now, if you access this on your mobile phone, and I'm going to show you how in a moment, the screen where you type your idea, you need to tap post to share the idea. Make sure you put your idea under the correct skills heading. Now, let me put the screen back for you so I can just show you what to do. This is my idea, remember? These are my questions. Don't worry about satisfying all the questions. Again, be realistic, but just try to think, how could I take this thing I normally do in my class, which I know works because I understand teaching and I understand language learning, and how can I very simply make it more student-centered, keep it familiar, make it accessible, and not spend loads of time on it? So just a reminder, these are your groups. If you missed them before, okay, make a note of your groups. And now I'm going to put the slide back on screen for you to think. While you're thinking and accessing the survey, you will not be able to see the survey. I will show you afterwards. So here's how you access the survey or access the ideas board. Here's the acronym. Here are the questions. Here is a QR code phone. And I will type the link into the chat box for you now so you can click on the link as well. I'm going to give you about two minutes, OK? Just a quick idea. You can add as many ideas as you want if you have more than one. Here's the link. I will keep talking occasionally while you work, just so you know that I'm here. Remember to share your ideas in the correct column. Whoops, excuse me. And yes, if for any reason you can't access this board, you can type your ideas in the chat box, but try to put them on the board. After the webinar, I will share the board with everybody so you have access to those ideas in future. I'll also copy them onto the PowerPoint slides. So you should be able to click the link. It is pinned at the top of the chat box. Wonderful. Now, if you have already entered your ideas, I'll give you a minute or two now to pause and just read some of the other ideas. You can scroll through the columns and see what everybody has written or is still writing. And remember, after the webinar, I will share this link so you can read them later if you don't have time now. Oh, I can see some really good ideas here. Great stuff.
if you need to post your comment to the idea, um, the idea board and you're on a phone, there should be a little pink button that says post after you've entered your idea. So tap that. If you've put the address in and you can't access it, check that um, everything that looks like an L in this link is an L. There are no number ones. So it's bit.ly slash four skills online. And if you're having technology fails, don't worry. Welcome to the world of teaching online. There are 700 of you trying to access this and enter your ideas now, so don't worry. And yes, put your ideas in the chat box if you have no other way. Okay, and I'll give you just one more minute. Use this time maybe to look at some of the other ideas on the board. You don't need to add any more now. If you are typing your idea on a computer, you don't need to submit. It just appears automatically. And when you're done, you can click somewhere else on the screen if you don't want to keep typing in the box. You don't need to post it or submit it. It's only on a mobile phone that you need to click post. Great, I can see some really good ideas here. Note that the newest ideas get posted at the bottom of the column, so keep scrolling down if you want to see the new ones. Wow, these are amazing ideas. These are great. You're teaching me a lot, guys. Well done. Hmm. Great ideas. Excellent. Really, really creative. Thank you, everybody. Some really great ideas here. And yes, you can absolutely get access to these ideas later on. I'm going to leave this board publicly available so you can see it later. And in the second webinar that we do today, I'll use a different board. So your ideas from this session will be together. And you will also have all the ideas from the second session if you want later. Um, I'll share all these links um, somehow. How can I share them? I will put them in the um, slides that you'll receive after the webinar. So I'm sorry, but we need to continue moving on. Um, I'm going to give you a couple of my own ideas that I prepared earlier, but I can see that you don't need them because you have so many great ideas of your own. Um, but here are a couple of other ideas you might use to develop the four skills. Um, so for reading, don't even do it online, do it offline on paper. Like pick up a real book. <laughs> um, you might do a book club, I saw somebody suggested that. Um, you can also tell the students to find something that they're interested in and read it online. I mean, the whole internet is there. We didn't have this when I was a child in school. I had to go to the library to find books for my interests. But they can find something that interests them and it can be as specific as they want. Um, and equally, just English around the home, if they, don't have a lot of books at home, maybe, again, because we can't make assumptions about their home environment. Maybe they don't have access to a lot of um, books or books in English, or they don't have the internet, but there is a lot of English in the world. They might find that sitting at their kitchen table, there's English on their food packaging, um, or international products like uh, a pair of shoes or something like that. So you can set tasks that involve them reading in the real world just within their house. Um, Similarly listening, they can find videos online that are related to their interests. 
and micro listening. So by having their own control over the recordings, they can listen to very short sections of a clip in great detail to catch pronunciation features or listen and listen and listen and listen until they understand that, that particular contraction or strange sound. Um, with writing, they can do collaborative writing if they have access to these tools. Google Docs are free, so the students can still write together. Um, or they can use, if you're able to do this and comfortable doing this, they can use um, the same things they use every day. You know, I have WhatsApp groups with friends or instant messaging. They could potentially use that too. And again, this is the F principle. It's familiar. They're not learning a new tool. They're just learning that they can use it for their learning. <laughs> Um, and for speaking, you know, you can record yourself on your mobile device um, or even just use a telephone. Pick up a telephone and leave somebody a voicemail or make a Skype call. So these are just a few ideas. Um, and I will also remind you that if you're particularly interested in speaking online, um, there is another webinar coming up um, by Chia Swan Chung. She'll be talking about doing the communicative approach online and motivating students to speak. Um, she's an excellent presenter, really good trainer, and I really recommend that if you're especially interested in speaking and how to do speaking in the online environment. So, the last section, um, and just one point because I can see somebody saying in the chat box, using WhatsApp with 27 students can be mad. Uh, yes, it can, but WhatsApp has a function where you can limit who can post to the group. So let's say, for example, you wanted to share a message with your students, but you don't want them to be able to talk to each other. You can create the group and you can set it so that only you can send messages they can't. Or you can select some people who can and some people who can't. So yes, it can be completely crazy when you have a lot of people in one WhatsApp group. Um, and yes, absolutely, if you don't want to share your personal number, then don't. This is just one idea. There are many ways. The most important point I want you to take away from this webinar is that technological tools are just one means. They are not the end. The end is learning, and you already know a lot about learning and about teaching. So we're just trying to think now of creative ways of making that learning and teaching happen when we don't have access to our usual environment. So presenting and practicing new language, the final part of the webinar. Now, you may have noticed that we only have a few minutes left. And you may remember that at the beginning of the webinar, I put a little um, star next to this one because we're going to do this in a slightly special way. Remember as well that we said at the beginning, you know, what motivates, what engages learners. It's not necessarily spending lots of face-to-face -face time discussing and sharing, although that's part of it. It's also just recognizing that the teacher cares, that they listen, and seeing a connection between what they're doing and their real life. And so I'm going to give you some homework. So we're actually not going to do this in the webinar. I've never done this before. Uh, this is completely experimental. Thank you all for joining with me. Your task is, ready? Remember, you'll receive these slides by email, but I would suggest you make a note or take a screenshot now when I've shown you the whole slide. So I'm going to give you four ideas for presenting or practicing new language, grammar or vocabulary, functional language. It's your job to select just one to research in your own time. And now I want to give you examples of how I can make this um, flexible for you, like I would with my students. So if you need suggestions, I will give you links. You do not need to use those links. They're just there if you want a bit of extra help. You're going to pick one which you think is interesting, which you do not already know about. So no cheating, okay? This is a chance for you to research and learn something new. And again, flexibility. If you don't like my suggestions, then choose something else. The purpose of the task is for you to learn one new idea for presenting or practicing new language. I'm giving you suggestions so you can start somewhere, but if you already have an idea like, oh, I want to know uh, how to use Flipgrid or something like that, then fine, do that instead. I don't mind. The purpose of the activity is to find one and only one new tool. Don't overwhelm yourself more than you already are. 
And if you have limited internet access, look in a book instead or call someone. Pick up the phone and call a colleague and say, I know you're really good at this thing. You use this with your students. Can you tell me how you do it? I want to learn how. Okay, so you don't need to have internet access to do this. Please limit yourself. I want you to spend no more than 30 minutes and I want you to promise me. So set a timer on your phone like I did, 30 minutes, press go and then do your task. And this 30 minutes includes the next step that I want you to share what you've learned. So email or maybe text a colleague, another teacher, to share your thoughts. And don't write loads and loads and loads, maximum 200 words. Okay, we're all busy, we all have limited time. If you don't have someone to share with, then please share it with me. You can share it by email or by Twitter and I will give you my contact details at the end of the presentation. Uh, please try to find a colleague first to share with because there are 700 of you and if you all decide to email me then I might not sleep tonight. <laughs> but if you're the kind of person who lives on the top of a mountain somewhere and you have no colleagues to share with, share it with me. And if you do that before the weekend, I promise to reply. Okay. This is the end of the slide. Please take a picture with your phone or take a screenshot. Um, I will also post this on Twitter. So if you don't have the chance to make a note now, you can find me on Twitter later and find the task. That way you don't have to wait to receive the slides. And in case you're wondering uh, how long is 200 words, here's an example um, from a course book, um, the Gateway course book. Uh, this is a little over 200 words. So this is plenty. This is more than enough. Okay. And now I will give you your um, selection of links and I will also copy and paste these into the chat box. So don't worry if you don't have time to write them down or you don't get the slides before Friday um, or you don't know how to take a screenshot, I'll put these in the chat box too. Um, the top two rows, these two, are probably a little bit easier if you're not confident. Um, the bottom two are there for people who really want to stretch themselves. Okay. So here are all the links. I'm going to copy and paste these links into the chat box now too. I'm just copying them. Please be patient. And there are a lot of people typing in the chat box. Oh my goodness, that looks really messy. I'm sorry about that. Um, don't worry if they go too fast and you can't see them. You can scroll back up in the chat box. And uh, again, I will add these to Twitter afterwards. So after the webinar, if you want to get these links and the task, just find me on Twitter and you'll see my tweet and you can copy it from there. So we have just a couple minutes left. So all that's left is to remind you um, of these other really great webinars. Um, there was this one yesterday by Tom Kittle. There should be a recording on the Macmillan website soon. Um, and there are two more coming up, which I really recommend if you have the time. I know everybody is very busy at the moment. So again, I'll just remind you, please be fair and realistic to yourself and do what you can. We are all learning together. Um, as Tom said yesterday, we're all in this together. So the final slide is just my um, contact details. If you want to get in touch, if you need to email me your ideas, um, or if you want to look on Twitter, I will share these links from this account, Laura, haha. -ha. So you can find the links online after the webinar. Um, I will do it very shortly after I have finished my coffee, I promise. And all that's left is to say thank you very much for your time. Uh, now get up and stretch and go wash your hands. And I hope to see you again at a future webinar. And thanks so much for making time for this. I know that you're all really, really busy now. And I appreciate seeing so many of you here. Um, so well done for making the time. And particularly if you got up at 7 o'clock in the morning <laughs> to join the webinar. Thanks a lot. And thanks to Macmillan for hosting. Thank you so much, Laura, on behalf of everyone here.